In this lesson, we're going to be solving rational equations. This is going to be the second part. Uh, we did five problems already related to this, and so we're going to do a couple more, um, a little bit more complicated. But this is pretty much going to be our common theme every single time, is we're going to try and create common denominators. Once we have our common denominators, we're going to drop the denominators and set the numerators equal to each other. We're going to solve, and we're going to double check that our solutions, um, there's even potential for our solutions to work. So here's what our next problem will look like. So we've already done five. We're going to do a couple more. So five divided by uh, t minus one plus two over t plus two equals 15 over t squared plus t minus two. All right, so in order to get common denominators, we need to look at the factors, see what each um, fraction has or doesn't have that the other one has. So um, we are going to factor this denominator, what multiplies to negative two that adds to positive one, and to be a plus two and a minus one. So before we get a little too far, we're gonna talk about what the denominator can't be. We can't divide by zero, so we wanna figure out what makes the denominator zero and kick those out, because those are the answers that are gonna be our extraneous solutions. So one would make this denominator zero, and this one, and negative two is gonna be an issue. So we gotta keep those in the back of our mind that once we solve this problem, if we get one or a negative two, we gotta kick them out. So, all right, now we're ready to go. So, uh, we have a t plus two and a t minus one. This one doesn't have a t plus two, so we need a t plus two multiplied to the top and the bottom. This one doesn't have a t minus one. So we'll multiply top and bottom by a t minus one. We'll distribute through and we're gonna have our common denominators and then we can just focus on the numerators. So if we distribute this, we're gonna get a five um, t plus 10 over t minus one t plus two plus two t minus two over our same t minus one t plus two equals, this didn't need anything, so it's just equal to 15 over the t minus one, t plus two. All right, so we're ready to just drop our denominators. They all match, so now we gotta get the numerators to match. So we have a five t plus 10 plus two t minus two equals 15, and that's really what we're trying to solve. So. To solve that, we're gonna combine our like terms. So we have a 5t and a 2t will make a 7t. 10 and negative eight make, uh, 10 and negative two make eight, which equals 15. So now we'll start to rearrange. We'll subtract the eight to both sides and that'll get us a 7t equals t, um, seven, sorry, 7t equals seven. Divide both sides by seven, and that gets us a t equals one. However, t equals one solves this, but if you plug t equals one into the original, the problem is, is that it's gonna make one or more of your denominators zero. And we can't have a fraction that, uh, we can't divide by zero, we can't have a fraction with the denominator of zero, so that one is one of our extraneous solutions and we have to kick that out. And it was the only solution, so that means we have a no solution. All right, so let's do another. So if we have one over x minus one over x plus one, equals one over 56. All right, denominator wise, what do they each have? What are we missing? They don't have anything in common. So the 56 is going to need an X multiplied to it. Let me write it in red. It's going to need an X multiplied to it and it's going to be an X, need an X plus one multiplied to it. 
So this one needs an x plus 1 and a 56. This is going to need a 56 and an x. All right, so we'll take care of each fraction. And that's going to need a 56 and an x plus 1. All right, so we're going to multiply everything together and see what we get. So common denominator wise, we're looking at a 56x and an x plus 1. All right, numerator wise, 56 distributed into the x plus 1 and then times another 1 just makes us have a 56x plus 56. All right, and then I don't like the minus, so I'm going to change any subtraction I have and I'm going to apply that negative to the numerator. So now it's just plus a negative 56x divided by 56x and x plus 1 equals, we'll distribute this in, the 1 doesn't do anything, so it's just going to be an x squared plus x, and we have a 56x x plus 1. Alright, so before we get too far, let's again not lose the fact that we may have some numbers that we got to kick out. So we have a denominator of uh, 0 if we plug a 0 in. So x cannot equal 0, and x can also not equal negative 1. Those two numbers would make the denominator 0. So we got to keep that in the back of our mind. So we have our common denominators. Perfect. So now I can drop all of that and just focus on the numerators. So we have 56x plus 56 plus a negative 56x. So those are those two numerators equal to x squared plus x. So let's start to put some stuff together and figure out what kind of equation we have going on, which also determines how we approach solving this. So we have the 56x and the 56x, negative 56x are going to cancel each other. So we have 56 equals x squared plus x. We have a quadratic, which means we need everything over to one side. So we'll bring the 56 over. That'll make us equal 0. So x squared plus x minus 56. All right, see if this thing is factorable. So anything that multiplies to 56 that adds to 1 would be a positive 8 and a negative 7. And those factors are going to give us solutions of negative 8 and positive 7. So the exclusions that we had were 0 and negative 1. So both of those should work. I could plug both of those in. I could plug the 8 in, negative 8 in and see if it works, adds up to negative or adds up to 1 over 56. Plug the 7 in, should also add up to 1 over 56. So those are our two solutions. All right, so let's do number 8. So number 8 is 4 over x plus 3 minus x over 3 minus x equals 18 over x squared minus 3, or minus 9. Okay, so um, similar to number 6, we have a quadratic in the denominator. We need to factor it, and then we can talk about our exclusions, and then we can talk about how to deal with our problem. So this factors, it's a difference of squares, it factors into x plus 3, x minus 3. All right, so... Um, Denominator wise, that the x plus 3s already match. This one looks awful similar to this. We can actually make this 3 minus x become an x minus 3 by factoring a negative out. So if we factor a negative 1 out, that'll make our negative x become a positive x. So I can put it in the front. And then our positive 3 will become a negative 3. So I'll put it second. So now we have the exact same factors. And not only that, but that negative 1 will actually make this subtraction 
become an addition. So that subtraction sign will cancel that negative sign. So we really are going to have this fraction plus this fraction equals the 18 over the x squared minus 9. So, all right. So what can x not equal? So x cannot equal a negative 3. would make that fraction um, a 0. And it would make, we need a positive 3 to make that denominator 0. And we have the exact same two factors there, so they've already been taken care of. So we can't have a negative 3 nor a positive 3. So now let's get into the finding common denominators. So that was all just kind of set up to get us going. Now this one needs an x minus 3. This fraction needs an x plus 3. And this doesn't need anything. So let's give everything what it needs. So we'll distribute. So we have a 4 x minus 12 over um, the x minus 3 x plus 3 and then plus because we had a subtraction but factoring out a negative cancels that makes it an addition so we'll factor the x distribute the x so x squared plus 3x over x minus 3 x plus 3 and we didn't have to do anything to the fraction on the right. It already had the factors we needed. All right, so now we're ready to solve. So let's drop our denominators. We have a 4x minus 12 plus x squared plus 3x. So those are those numerators equals 18. So it's looking like we're going to get a quadratic. So I'm going to combine everything together and then I'll pull the 18 over. So we have x squared, 4x and 3x makes 7x minus 12 equals 18. I'm going to pull the 18 over. To make that happen, we have to subtract 18. All right, so we'll subtract 18 over and that'll get us an x squared plus 7x minus 30 equals 0. All right, we're trying to see if this is factorable, so there's anything that multiplies the negative 30 that adds to 7. I believe there is. So we we'll, should have a positive 10 and a negative 3. So this factor will give us a solution of negative 10. This factor will give us a solution of 3. All right, so we potentially have two answers to this. But going back to at the very beginning, what should what can we not have? Because it makes the denominator 0, and that is the positive 3. So that one gets kicked out, and this ends up being our only solution. All right, we have one more. And this one is going to have a whole bunch of variables in it and we're gonna solve for a specific variable. So we're gonna have a one over r equals a over a plus b. And we're gonna solve for b. So we need to get that by itself. But right now it's in the denominator. So really we need to figure out, let's get a common denominator, or since we have a proportion, a fraction equals a fraction, a ratio equals a ratio, we have a proportion, we can cross multiply. So this one looks ugly, like how are we gonna get that B out of the denominator? However, if you cross multiply, so one times um, A plus B, so that cross product equals this cross product, A times R, if we distribute a 1 in, it doesn't do anything. a plus b equals a r. Since we no longer have fractions, we can just rearrange things, and we're trying to get b by itself. Perfect. We'll bring the a over. So we'll subtract a. All right. And so you'll have a b equals. But these aren't like terms. So it's a r minus a. They can't combine. So you can leave your answer like that, or 
you could factor an a out and then that would have an r minus 1 so b would equal a times the quantity r minus 1 or a r minus a and that's it so that one worked out pretty nice because it was just a proportion and you could cross multiply to get it out of the fraction and then we rearranged some stuff to get the b by itself all right and that was solving rational equations the second part a little bit more complicated that's it